Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and we're going to review the Droid Zyboard 10.1. This is Motorola's latest offering into the Android tablet marketplace. It runs Honeycomb 3.0, and overall it's a pretty decent tablet, but it does have some flaws. But let's first talk about the tablet itself, and what's actually inside of it, and what makes it pretty decent. So this is Corning Gorilla Glass. It protects the front glass. Pretty nice. 10.1 inch screen, 1280 by 800 resolution. Pretty nice looking screen, not quite as vibrant as you might like. It is an IPS display, so pretty well viewable at most angles, and it, it's pretty decent overall. And uh, you can see highly reflective, and that's not necessarily a great thing, but that's kind of what you get with tablets nowadays. Now inside, it's run by dual 1.2 gigahertz processor, or dual core rather, and it's pretty nice. And it does have a GPU as well. It's a Power VR SGX 540 GPU. It has an accelerometer, gyro compass, uh, barometer, which is kind of different. And it also has a 1.2 megapixel front-facing camera. On the back, we have a 5 megapixel rear-facing camera with LED flash. We also have dual speakers for virtual surround sound. We have our volume up, volume down here on the side, our power slash sleep wake button on this side. Now on the bottom, we have our SIM card slot for the Verizon 4G LTE. Very fast speeds with this thing. I don't have it connected to Wi-Fi because it's actually faster than my home modem for the most part. You can see there's our SIM card. It's a micro SIM in there. Uh, it's pretty nice overall. On the bottom, we have our HDMI out. Uh, mini HDMI and mini USB or micro USB port. On the front you can see it's just a sheet of glass like you would expect and it does support things like flash and things like that and it works pretty well. The battery is good for up to 10 hours. If you're doing heavy 4G LTE browsing you're really not going to get that kind of speed but overall it's pretty nice. So let's go ahead and turn it on and it does come with this stylus. You don't have to use the stylus and the stylus is kind of interesting uh, because it has a battery in it and it's a, it's a, a quadruple A battery. You can see there on the front. So it's kind of interesting that it's really small, but it connects on its own and you can use it. You don't have to, and it's nice and optional. It is not a capacitive touch uh, stylus. So it's using wireless technology to actually know where it is and do things. If you try this on an iPad, it will not work. Uh, I've tried it myself actually. So overall pretty nice. It does come in at a pretty steep price tag though at 629 for this particular 32 gigabyte model there's a 16 and 32 gigabyte and 64 gigabyte and it also has one gig of ram for the processor so kind of expensive and that 629 is with a two-year contract on verizon so pretty expensive but if this is what you want it's not bad so let's go ahead and unlock it now i can use the stylus it just works it works nice. I'm not going to go over the OS too much, other than that they gave you this text input. And what you have is this little icon in the bottom here. And if I tap on that, I can open Evernote. I can open. I can do a sticky note. Let's do that again. Sticky note. And it's giving you best results, things like that. Mm, that's fine. Whatever. So I can just draw. It's pretty responsive. Uh, we can go to text. And the text input can be done this way. Or if we tap on here, we have different input methods. So I can do my script, sw stylus, swipe, things like that, all built in. So if I go here, it's trying to show you that you can how you can type and, and write and things like that. Uh, overall, pretty nice. And we'll say hello. You can see I'm kind of scribbling. Didn't come in perfect. It came in OK. It said HE110. Uh, we'll try it again. So it takes some practice, especially writing on glass. You can see it's not very responsive. And that's really one of the downfalls of this tablet is this stylus. I really, other than for drawing, don't, don't like the text input. It does not seem to work well. I've tried this over and over. So you can see I, I hit the screen with my hand. It doesn't recognize that I shouldn't be able to do that. And it provides a little bit of a problem as far as that goes. But if you wanted to just draw, we could do that. And it makes things a lot easier. So I prefer the keyboard for typing. And you can just type by hand. And responsiveness is good. Uh, so you can just type my name there. And responsiveness is good. But overall, if we wanted to do uh, eraser, we can erase here. You can see it's a little bit goofy at times, but overall, most of the time I've messed around with this, it works pretty good. So let's do blue 
and we can just draw. You can see it lags a little bit behind, so it's not for anyone that's a real serious artist looking for, you know, touch touch sensitive things for art. Now there may be apps and things that support that, but in this case they don't. Now the one really good thing about this tablet is its speed. The speed is incredible when it comes to 4G LTE, and you're going to see this more and more with LTE. So responsiveness is good, like I said, and speed test. Let me just show you, for instance, we have three bars of LTE 4G. This was the last test. Let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So right now we're getting close to, well, 15, 16 megabits per second down. That's really fast. Upload 7 to 8. I've seen it as high as 12. So most people's upload at home is 10 by 1, download 10 by 1, or uh, in my case, 30 by 5. So I have faster download, but the upload speed here is faster, just wirelessly. It's pretty impressive, and uh, you can't really complain about that. The only time you're really going to burn through the battery quickly, though, is browsing and things heavy data use on LTE as it uses more power. But overall, really nice tablet a little pricey and but but it's built well uh, it it just feels good overall as far as sturdiness this has kind of got a rubber feel to it on the outside as well so it's it's got some nice features the camera's decent uh, it's just the problem is is the price if they could get this down to uh, five hundred dollars uh, with no contract uh, it'd be it'd be an easy buy for someone that wants something other than an iPad. You can see there's the camera. Uh, let's see if we can focus on that a little bit better. Here we go. See if it'll do it by itself. There it went. It auto-focused, took a decent picture, and we can take a look at that picture here. So you can see the camera's pretty good. Overall, it's, it's decent. It's not a bad tablet at all. It's just maybe out of the price range or... Uh, too close to some of the competitors if you're looking for something else uh, but overall great great tablet uh, i like the idea of a stylus not having to use it or having the option to use it uh, it's neat to be able to draw on the screen but when it comes to text input you might want to look elsewhere or for an alternative or something like that uh, overall though great thing they've got some extra little apps on here too but basic motorola things that you're going to find uh, overall, though, pretty decent. If you have any comments about it, please go ahead and comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this tablet. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that. This is Aaron. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.